peace, peace, a bargani, Islam, Salam, Hatep, Rahubat, Dino Lako Ninani, Chief Noble, Bandele El Amin, back again for another video. And today's video will be discussing the birth certificate. This will be basically part two to avoiding a birth certificate. Okay, so we'll get into that. But before we get into that, check out the Holy Ancestral Covenant. This is the book of our ancestors. This is the first book of many to come dealing with our spiritual past. And this is the religious book, if you will, the spiritual religious book of the Morris Temple of New Kemet. Okay, so it's a must have for all conscious, spiritually centered people. Okay, so please check that out. And the uh, new book, check out our new book, The Birth Certificate Explained. Okay, how to avoid birth certificate, which is what this video will be dealing with. But you can get a copy now. There's been so many people uh, waiting for this. So it's finally here. Uh, you know, so please check it out. You can go to Amazon and get this book as well. Okay. And also, please check out the website. If you go to indigenous services dot webs dot com it is the one shop stop for your indigenous moorish uh you know pan africanist you know rights all that civil rights it's the one stop shop for the legal needs the lawful needs uh you know and history everything okay so i want to show you though real quick if you go to the links Go to the website, go to the links, and you will see the categories here, okay? There's a lot of stuff, public laws, the public law library, okay? Forms and instructions, okay? Then it's got the even the legal codes you need, the procedures, the rules of evidence, appellate procedure, Uniform, Uniform Commercial Code, Treaty of Peace and Friendship, Social Security Act, Ohio Codes, that's our codes. You know, it's just got a plethora of information, okay? And court cases, and you can find even child support, Morris documents, and also any of our literature for sale. So if you go to links on that page, yo, You'll be able to find everything. It's the one-stop shop. I just had to show y'all that, okay? But what we're going to get into today is basically we're going to be dealing with the birth certificate. Uh, if you had watched the previous video, this was uh, a few years ago in regards to the birth certificate. A lot of people have uh, seen that video, and uh, they were wondering about what to do. You know, they saw the video, and they was like, well, what do we do? to, you know, get it done because I, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people, when they get into the hospital, there is, uh, you know, issue, you know, they're, they're, they're threatened, you know, the hospital will put a lot of pressure on you to get a birth certificate. And I've had many people, you know, many sisters calling in the hospital, you know, freaking out, like what to do. And so really what it is, what we're going to talk about in this video today, we're going to get a little bit more into like what birth certificates are. And we're going to look at uh, a part of the book that I put out that we said you get on Amazon, same as plug, but that vid, if you, if you uh, get this book, it will help you be able to, you know, do this. So it is it is very, it is very important that you get this book, you know, before you go to the hospital, you know, you, you know, if you're thinking about having a child or if you're pregnant and you're a few months in and you have time, you know, any, you know, even if you just, even if you're pregnant and you're like about to deliver soon, 
you know, I mean, it would be wise to get this book. Okay. And the, the purpose of this book is not just to help you maneuver around, you know, getting a birth certificate because, you know, that's, it's, it's really to give you understanding of a birth certificate. Okay. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at some of the book. Okay. You got the birth certificate explained. What I'm going to do is go over like the early chapters and then we're going to talk about it. Okay. So if you look at it, it's got chapter one is the intro. Okay. So it's just saying that the purpose of this manual is to guide you to, to live in the society without a birth certificate or filing one for, for alternative documentation to be used in place of state issued documents. Okay. That's, that's the key. This is not to, you know, get someone in trouble or, you know, trying to go against the law. The fact is that a birth certificate is ultimately used to identify. And so there are other alternatives that you can use that is accepted by the state as identifying markers or substitute, substituting the birth certificate. Okay. So we're going to look at process of creating a birth certificate the history and other components, okay? So, it's saying in order to protect yourself, you must equip your mind with certain understanding of information. You first understand the history of birth certificates. And so that's what I kind of want to get into is the history. Like, what is a birth certificate, okay? We know it's much more than a form of uh, identification for your child. A birth certificate is a contract, so understand that with the state. Understand it, it's a contract with the state. And that is the key point, understanding, overstanding, that you are contracting with the state you live in, okay, when you create that birth certificate. So it would be nice to know what you are contracting and signing off on because that can be some of the issues that you'll find yourself caught up in later on if there's any problems okay with the relationship or with the child these things will come back because of it's a contract okay so we're going to get in you know you're looking and you'll see that later on but uh we're going to look at an article that is in the book okay dealing with the history of birth certificates so you look at what is where's your birth certificate okay you know, it's probably tucked away somewhere, okay? But we're going to look at the history of it because birth certificates is something fairly new to the world, okay? I mean, uh, you know, in most cases, a birth certificate is close to maybe 100 years old. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, birth certificates weren't around. You know, we, oft we often pick, pick out that, you know, in this country, the founding fathers of the, you know, America, uh, like George Washington and you know, Thomas Jefferson and whatnot, those people did not have birth certificates. So, you know, it hasn't always been something that's been used. Okay, so uh, it says for centuries, births and deaths were, listen to this, were documented in church records, not government ones. Okay, so. When they did start, you know, recording deaths and stuff, it was recorded by the church. The church had the responsibility, and that is a very key point as well. Because when we talk about, you know, creating alternative documentation to be recognized, the church and religion is plays a major part. Because the church can, and as you see, were the ones who documented these things, okay? Not the government. So, and this says, in early attempts in America to get the government involved in recording birth stall. So, uh, early in the game, it was stalled. The Virginia General Assembly passed a law that required all ministers to keep track of Christians, marriages, and burials. So this, once again, this it's, uh, it was up to the ministers, even though Virginia, this was back in 1632. So, you know, this was prior to 
the United States or any kind of constitution or even before the uh, Continental Congress, for that matter. Uh, this was very early in like British and uh, British, you know, common law type stuff. So as you can see that they were saying that they required the ministers to keep track of this stuff. It was not a government thing. Okay. It has always been, well, I won't say always, but prior to this and for a while, it had been, you know, a, a religious practice. Okay. So then it says, it goes on that Massachusetts passed a 1639 law acquiring towns to do the same thing. But it says records remain patchy and inaccurate. You know, a lot, you know, they said part of the reason for this messy process was childbirth itself. Women birthed children at home. Uh, and in friends' houses, and many did not survive infancy or childhood. If the child did not live to be baptized uh, or was enslaved, okay, that's very key for melanated people, you know, because, you know, practice of birth and its abilities was, was taken away from people who were enslaved or put into some type of enslavement. Okay, but it says that either it was enslaved or moved from place to place. Its birth might not have been recorded at all, or its memory might live only in the family Bible. Okay, that's another thing, the family Bible. You understand that through religion, again, that's a religious book, that they use the Bible to document it. And so that would be, that would have uh, been deemed as a legal form of identification. And even to this day, it is still used as secondary documentation if you don't have a birth certificate in many instances. So, you know, that's something else to look at. Uh, it said that it, it took a world war to finally get birth certificates to push it needed to become universal. So basically during World War II, created a crisis with 43 native born Americans. So, you know, basically saying because of the baby boom, the baby boom, we had so many children born. Okay, this is at this time, the article estimated about 200,000 people were born every year without getting a certificate. Wow. So as a social, listen, a social welfare state expanded. As the social welfare state expanded, so did the need for birth certificates. In 1946, the National Office of Biostatistics took over birth certificates nationally so not to get into conspiracy because this book really is trying to break down and break away from just conspiracy talk it really is trying to get to real factual information so that's what you will see is factual information um some may be disappointed in the fact that it's not a conspiracy or that some of the conspiracies are uh you know exposed but the truth is, I mean, you know, for people who are really trying to understand this, that we're trying to break this down. And one of the things that said right here is that um, as in the 40, 1946, so I mean, like, we're talking about after 1933, okay? We're talking about after, uh, you know, the United States basically uh, came off the gold reserve. So we're talking about after that. And basically anything after 33 you see America going into a social, social reform. Okay. This is when you really start seeing social security numbers. All these things start to pop out. Okay. And that's because of social reform. And, and, and as you see that the government tried to take over vital statistics with the national vital statistics. Okay. Uh, it says that these days they prove eligibility for things like social security and Medicaid, but, uh, just, just going back over that little part right there, as social reform state, the social welfare state expanded, so did the need for birth certificates. So what they're saying, you know, as people needed more social needs, so what is that? That's meaning that these social, uh, you know, things they needed were basically governmental assistance. So if they needed something from the government, they had to show proof of nationality and a lot of that has to do with the national debt. Okay, so we, we have to get into. Uh, but, you know, we do discuss this in the book as well. 
So it says this, looking at the article gives you a glimpse into the birth certificate. It is a gradual need, uh, is a gradual need to document the births of people. Okay, but the dependency of birth certificates to secure the monetization of humans becomes a major issue. Okay, so as as social reform starts to happen in America, that is a need for social insurances, which is where the social security number come in. And I like now this book is not necessarily about the social security or the social insurance system, but it definitely does have parts of it in here. Okay, it definitely does discuss some of those parts in there. But, um, you know, what we're looking at is, you know, with with the birth certificate is we're, we're, we're beginning to see the birth certificate becoming more monetized and its use and need uh, in America as these social programs begin to, you know, uh, you know, become more, you know, used and become expand, if you will, as these social insurances expand, you will see a bigger need of birth certificates and to the point where we're at today. Okay, so I mean, uh, it is important it's very important to understand this before you go off because if you are pregnant or if you are thinking about having a child and but you're looking for other ways to you know deal with the state in regards to your birth you know outside of actually you know like like i said in the first video you know your best your best bet is to have your child you know, in the house with a, with your doula or your midwife. Okay. So, I mean, like if you have a doula midwife, you have it at the house, you guys don't really have to document it. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of times when you do have a midwife, they do have to document that as well because, you know, they're regulated by the state. So, you know, I take that into consideration, but really this book basically shows you how to prepare for the whole birthing process and learning and understanding what the birth certificate is about gives you better understanding and gives you a better feel and be able to i won't say defend but not just defend yourself against you know like the hospital or whoever but it actually just gives you the comp the, the confidence to you know go through and you know, go through this and not really worry about it. And and that's really the key because, you know, a lot of times uh, sisters are in the hospital and our women are in the hospital. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, maybe the father is not there for whatever reasons. I mean, they're very vulnerable and they a lot of times don't know exactly what to say or do. You know, so I mean, like this is a book to have. This is a book to even read while you're there. Um, and just to give you a quick, because there are preparations that you need to have going into the hospital. You know, you need to be prepared. You need to have documentation prepared for the doctors and everybody if you do go to a hospital. And so we discussed that as well. So, um, you know, we, so we just get into some things. Okay. So, you know, I'm not, not to, you know, go through the whole book, but like we say, if you look here, you know, we discuss real issues that can't be disputed. Like there is the big thing about the straw man and the bond. Okay. And, and I'm not here to necessarily say that there is no truth in that. However, when you read this book, you'll find that that can be debunked or that it is debunked. And the fact and the fact that it can or is debunked, you always will need something more substantial. You'll need something more sturdy, something that you can stand on when you are dealing with the public. 
Because one thing you got to understand about the public, they are trained to to carry out particular tasks, and that's really what they know. They're, you know, when we go to the hospital, when we deal with the nurses, these people are trained professionals to do a certain job. Um, and at the same sense, they're kind of like your customer service. So they're like real trained, but they're like your wait waiter or waitress. Okay, when you're in the hospital, they, they're, they're like a waiter or a waitress. Now, I'm not taking away from their study because, you know, they had to go to school and do a lot of study. So this is not to take away. But what I'm saying is that they take on a role of customer service. And being in a customer service position, you are not privy to a lot of information. Okay, so, I mean, you might be trained to perform but if it's outside of that training then it can be sketchy for you so as a nurse when they see a uh, when a person comes in and doesn't get a birth certificate being that they're trained a certain way it becomes a shock so you will see a lot of them try to you know either convince you that you have to get a birth certificate or that you should and that, you know, it's going to cause troubles with the baby, uh, you know, won't be able to do certain things in life, uh, any of those type of things in nature. Um, those are not necessarily, they're not lawyers, you know, and that's one thing you have to ask them. You have to say, well, are you, are you a lawyer? You know, I thought you were a nurse, not a lawyer, because you're giving me legal, are you giving me legal advice? You know, and that's that's another thing that you you know that you that you want to maybe use when you're dealing with, you know, having a child. You know, being able to handle the nurse if if you're in a hospital. Like I said, some people are not, but even when you're dealing with the midwife, you know, the midwife has to answer to the state as well. So they might come and not say they're gonna come at you a certain way because midwives are usually more into nature and they are the original people the practitioners, you know, of profession when it comes to having a child. So they're usually a lot more uh, laid back and off hands approach to those type of uh, situations. You know, they're primary, primarily their job is to make sure that this baby comes out healthy as can be. So you may not, but, but just to say, you know, that because they do, when you when you do have a child at home and you have a midwife, they will offer you documentation for the birth certificate. They have to either fill out something themselves and send into vital statistics or whatnot or whoever. Okay, so that's something else to look at too as well, and you just have to be prepared for that. Okay, but. You know, understand that there is a system, a process, a process that can make everything a smoother transition in childbirth. Okay, so um, I hope you know I'm not just running off, but uh, you know, I just want y'all to know that there is a way to do these things, and really, it's. The way to do it is to go back to our ancient creeds, go back to our ancient forefathers and foremothers, go back, which is our rites of passage, which we will discuss also in this book as well. But you have to have a rites of passage that is controlled by your community. Okay, so, uh, you know, for instance, you guys have a rites of passage, you have a, a if you have a religious ceremony, now, now you got a religious ceremony going on in, in the hospital. Okay. So have, if you have a religious rites of passage or a religious ceremony, that is a constitutional right. It is separate from church and state. So you're, you're putting the, the birth back into a religious fold okay you're taking it away you're taking it back from the state okay
Okay. If, like when we read before, when we read before, it talked about uh, how the church handled these things or how the state gave them, made, made them deal with that. Okay. So it used to be in the hands of religion and in, in the hands of your community. And then it was taken away from you by the state. Okay. And really for the purpose of monetization. That's really the key. So, I mean, if you're going to get a birth certificate, understand that it, what its purpose is for. So, if you are, you know, a free person and you want your children to have no, if you want them to contract their birth, why not do it through your church, your, your religious institution? Why not do it with them? Or why not do it through a religious institution? Okay. Um, and that's basically what Morris New Temple, the Morris, the Morris Temple of New Kemet is. Okay. It's, it's a religious institution set up to formulate, to do these things for their community to create the documentation or religious documentations for the community. Okay. So that is really what, uh, what we're dealing with, with the birth certificate. I hope that this will give you some information. And like I said, please, uh, check it out. If you like this video, please give it a like, please, uh, thumbs up and, and please subscribe to the channel. It would be very appreciated. Uh, you know, we're trying to get 10,000 views. We're trying to get 10,000 followers, 10,000 of them, you know, and we want to get these likes up. So, you know, we appreciate if you guys like the videos and check out any of the other videos. If you haven't seen the first birth certificate, please go back and check that birth certificate video out and we will continue to bring you this information. So until then, Tutanana. Peace.